Robert, this week's story is about Baal, and Baal suffers with alcoholism, and he claims that Christ freed him from his addiction. There are so many people out there watching this podcast or, or, or out in the world struggling with addiction. Do you think we as a society are underestimating the power of Jesus Christ and how he can free us from this? Yes, Matthew, and uh, let, let me answer it this way. When I was a teenager, now in the 70s, there was a book that came out that was called The Cross and the Switchblade book written by David Wilkerson. Mm -hmm. David Wilkerson, familiar name to everybody, was a gentleman who was reading a, um, I believe it was a Life magazine article in 1958 about a murder by teen gang members. When he was reading the article, Matthew, God speaks to him and says, David, I want you to go to New York City and help those boys. Right. David goes. Mm -hmm. And he shares the gospel. Nikki Cruz, who was the, and I want to make sure I get this right, he was the warlord leader and president of the Mau Wau gang, gets saved. Teen Challenge is born. Now, Teen Challenge is a ministry that David Wilkerson started, and the cross and the switchblade is the narrative of that entire story. But Teen Challenge as a ministry is incredible because it is, Matthew, one of the world's largest and I'm not going to say treatment centers, but one of the world, world's largest ministries that help people with addiction and alcoholism. What sets it apart is because of its Christian perspective and its principles. But here's what I found interesting. Time Magazine did an article and said that in their studies, they found that Teen Challenge has helped 70% wow. of its individuals who had success in being, we're going to say, set free from addiction from alcohol or drugs. So it's one of the best kept secrets. The problem with Teen Challenge is this, that you can't receive government funding or corporations funding because it's religious. Right. So it all comes in by donations. So to the point, is the power of God, the gospel of Jesus Christ underestimated? Absolutely, because I have seen the power of God demonstrated in a man's life when I was pastoring in Niagara Falls. He was the um, town, I, I'm going to say town drunk, but he, um, that was sort of his nickname. So when people said the town drunk, they knew they were speaking of this gentleman named John. But he, he for whatever reason, suffers with alcoholism, bound by it, would come by the church daily, um, completely inebriated. But there was a day when we were holding special meetings and John came to the church door. It was a, I believe it was a Tuesday or Wednesday morning. And, I, you know, I, I confess when I saw John come, I, I got a little disheartened because I said, you know, I'm thinking we've got these great meetings going on. John, you're here. You're, you're drunk. You're just going to disrupt things. But right. I just felt, hey, invite him in. He came in, sat down. Some people gathered around him and said, you know what, Pastor, speaking to me, let's pray for John. Let's do it. Prayed for John within four to five minutes, Matthew. The power of God set John free from alcoholism. He was a different person. So the point being, when it comes to the power of God, when it comes to the gospel, setting people free from bondages, particularly alcoholism, I've seen it. I know it works. It works in Teen Challenge. Problem is in our society, it's religious. Right. And that's where there's always this black mark against it. Right. And I think, you know, I've had struggles with alcoholism in my past, and I tried counseling, post-traumatic stress counseling, addictions counseling. And for me, nothing else, has, nothing else worked but the gospel of Jesus Christ. So I can testify or make a testimony to that being true. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I don't think I'm alone there at all. No, there's many people. And again, pastoring in my world uh, 20 years ago, um, a lot of family members struggled with alcoholism, tried to go to treatment centers, um, very low success rate. Mm -hmm. But when it comes to the power of the gospel of Jesus Christ, it has, and I've seen it, sets people free. Now, there's another part of Baal's story that I found really interesting, and that's that we actually interviewed, or you interviewed, Baal's wife about 18 months ago about her conversion. And at the time, he was not a Christian. And I can recall him being on set, you know, watching what we were doing. And now, he's converted. I mean, there are so many people out there, Christians who are married to non-Christians, who may struggle with that, being married to a non-believer. What does this story have to say to them? 
You know, I, it, it's interesting because I remember when we were doing Tina's interview, I'm interviewing Tina and I could see you out of the corner of my eye. Um, you were there, your executive producer, you were talking to Ball and Ball wasn't saved at that time. So there was seeds being planted, which is incredible. But to the point, here's, here's the answer to the question. Never give up if your spouse is an unbeliever and you are a believer. Never give up. There's two instances in the book of Acts, Matthew, where um, it talks about an individual being saved and their household. Right. One deals with Cornelius in Acts 11. The other deals with the Philippian jailer in Acts chapter 16. Both instances... Each individual got saved and their household. But here's what's interesting. It all began in the place of prayer. So mm. prayer is powerful. So I would suggest that dealing with Tina and Ball's story, Ball being the person that came to Christ later, Tina, I remember her telling me numerous times where she's praying for her husband, believing that he'll be saved, and not that it was easy, but she prayed and it did come through to the place where Baal accepted Christ. And of course, you can hear his testimony. But what's also interesting is as you're praying, because people say, well, you know, I prayed once, I prayed twice, I prayed a week, nothing's happened. Right. Keep praying. Because Paul says in 1 Corinthians chapter 7, I believe, that if you're an unbelieving, if you are a believer and have an unbelieving spouse, how you live, what you do, how you conduct yourself, you don't know if, when, that person gets saved. Right. So the encouragement is pray, but just keep living a Christ-like lifestyle. And eventually, Scripture promises you and your household will be saved. Right. Well, we saw it in their story. It's amazing. Yeah. Now, one other thing about Bob's story, you know, and not to be too controversial here, but addiction is big business. I mean, that can be for the drug dealers or, you know, people profiting off people who are struggling with the addiction. But the recovery business is big business in itself. You know, different types of organizations or companies trying to sell people um, a strategy of how we're going to free you from addiction. Do you think sometimes the conversation around Christ being the solution to this is, is somewhat avoided because it's free? It's an interesting point. I mean, the answer I would say is yes. Um, the addiction business, treatment business. I, I, I read somewhere it's like 35 plus billion dollar business. Now, when you begin to think about that, you wonder, okay, so if the gospel, which is free, can set people free, then what are these treatment centers worried about? Is it maybe loss of employment? Um, are they fearful that because it's religious, there's going to be issues with people wanting to come and be a part of it? I'm not sure. But I always go back to the point when I mentioned a little earlier, Teen Challenge. A 70% success rate. A lot of the treatment centers, they claim there's a 5 to 10% success rate, and it's based on sort of the 12-step program, which, which is obviously good, but a 5 to 10% success rate compared to a 70. Now, just thinking about that, you'd say, why wouldn't you support the 70% success rate? Why won't governments and corporations give to that? Well, because it's religious. That's the tickler. But if government's supposed to serve the people, I mean, that's the best way to serve people in getting the communities in a place where when you've got people that are bound to be free and it's the gospel so it's very interesting and I I it's big business but I just wonder if they would just try it once to say you know what we're doing these particular treatments and not there's anything wrong with them but there's such a low success rate teen challenge and the gospel's got a 70 percent what if we just invest here and it works how many more people can we reach? And it doesn't cost any money. Right, it's, it's absolutely free. Mm -hmm. Now, Robert, this is such a fascinating episode to me, too, because I think addiction is such a huge problem in our society. And you and I talk about how, you know, almost everybody can do something to show compassion to people. You know, we've, we've had long conversations about changing the words. I mean, even when we talked about the word drunk, how can we change that? The word junkie, how can we change that? What would your advice be? And I'm just interested in this. To, the, to someone watching this, what can they do to open up their heart more to people who are struggling with addiction? You mentioned the word compassion, um, and, and that's the key. I mean, the Gospels are filled with statements where Jesus had compassion. And, and compassion is, um, it's not necessarily empathy, because if you've never been an alcoholic, it's hard to empathize, but to have that compassion towards seeing a person struggling. What can you do? I mean, let's say it's a family member. 
What can you do? It's easy to say, I'm going to pray for you. But to actually do something about it, have a conversation, reach out to that person and possibly offer the help. But I would say as a believer in Christ, let's, let's sit down and try to say, if I was talking to you, Matthew, Matthew, let me tell you about Jesus Christ and the power of the gospel. Would you be open to me praying with you, for you? Would you be open to me sitting down with you on a regular basis and helping you through this particular challenge that you're having, this bondage? Would you be willing to be open to say, yes, I possibly tried other treatments, I've tried this program and that program, hasn't worked. Would you be willing to try the gospel of Jesus Christ? Would right. you be willing to allow your life to be changed and believe and trust that God can change it? Just that simple, just offering them the information. If they're open to that and they're willing to receive it, Matthew, I, I, I want to say I can guarantee they'll be set free. Robert, thank you so much. Now, if you want to see Bal's show, it, go to www.thisisyourstory.ca. You can watch his full episode there and lots of other episodes. Thanks for watching us today. Take care.